Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Brewers Minute. So last week, we talked about Rivals of Ixalan combos for Commander, and this week, we are doing our traditional seven modern combos from Rivals of Ixalan, talking about some of the sweet new synergies, and some of these might be considered loose, uh, the definition of combo is definitely debatable. So there are at least cool synergies. Some of them you probably consider combos. It depends on what you think a combo is. I mean, I think an opponent playing a Delver on turn one and then having a spell on top of their deck to flip it, that counts as a combo in my book. But I don't know. Everyone has their own definition. Anyway, we got seven sweet combos to talk about today, which means we better jump right into it. So first, a quick reminder, if you enjoy Brewers Minute and the other series here on the channel, it would be amazing of you. If you could take a second, click that that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So we're going to jump into our list, starting with number seven, where we actually have a retread from last week. I promise this is the only combo we mentioned twice with last week's commander video and this week's modern video, but it's worth it because it's a little different in modern. So we're talking Famish Paladin with Resplendent Mentor. So you probably know what this does. You play Famish Paladin. It doesn't untap normally. It only untaps when you gain life, but Resplendent Mentor gives white creatures the ability to tap to gain a life, which technically means if you get both on the battlefield together, you can just tap your Famished Paladin to gain a life, which untaps your Famished Paladin. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Infinite life combo. So the reason I wanted to mention this, even though we talked about it as far as commander combos last week, is you can easily just slot this into Soul Sisters. We already have Soul Sisters as a deck with Soul Warden, with Soul Attendant, a Johnny's Pride Mate, Sarah Send It, all these white creatures that care about life gain synergies. Famished Paladin is already not a horrible two drop, a three, three for two in a deck that that is always gaining life to keep it untapped isn't a horrible deal anyway. And then you can just play a couple copies of Resplendent Mender and eventually like Splinter Twin your opponent out with infinite life. Also making your Ajani's Pride Mate infinitely big, making sure your Sarah's Ascendant is a 6-6 six, six flying lifelinker. So that's why I wanted to mention again, it seems like you can easily just slot this combo into Soul Sisters. Whether it's correct or not, if your goal is to win a tournament, that's certainly up for debate, but it's certainly a really cool and really fun addition to your your Soul Sisters deck, which puts it at number seven on our list. So moving on to number six on our list, we have Blood Sun with the Bounce Lands from Ravnica. So if you're not familiar with Blood Sun, it's kind of like a hate card, but you can also use it similar to Solemnity as an offensive combo piece. And that's what we're doing here. So if you have a Blood Sun out, your lands lose all their abilities except mana abilities, which means if you play a Bounce Land like Gruel Turf or Azorius Chancery or Boros Garrison, what you end up with is a land that taps for two colored mana, but doesn't make you bounce land and enters untapped. Basically, they're an upgrade, a strict upgrade on Ancient Tomb City of Traders. So if you're playing a Blood Sun deck, you can just play a million soul lands in your deck, which means every land up you play is adding two mana. We see this being the primary synergy of decks like Eldrazi Tron, where you play Eldrazi Temple, Eldrazi Temple, play Thought Not Seers on turn two with a Blood Sun out and the bounce lands in your deck, you can do this in any deck you want, which just gives you an incredible amount of ramp, lets you start playing really huge things super, super fast. So a really cool combo, little risky, because if you don't draw your Blood Sun, you're stuck with a bunch of bounce lands, which are pretty clunky, especially with Ghost Quarters and Field of Ruins. But if you have a Blood Sun out, you can go absolutely insane with the Ravnica bounce lands. Moving on to number five on our list, we have Warkite, Marauder, and Is It Staticaster. So this might be considered more of a synergy than a real combo, but the idea is pretty straightforward. So Warkite Marauder attacks and lets you turn a creature into a 0-1 until end of turn, which means if you have an Is It Staticaster, you can just shoot down that creature by tapping it, which is awesome. That means if your opponent has Tarmogoyce or Death Shadows or any other huge creatures, you can just shoot them down and you can do this every turn. Your opponent's playing Reality Smasher. Sure, whatever. Attack with Warkite Marauder, shoot it down. Your opponent plays a Tarmogoyf. Do the same thing. If not, not see or do the same thing. The other reason to be super excited for this combo is Warkite Marauder is a human and Is It Static Caster already shows up at least in the sideboards of human decks, which means a five color human deck can very easily play this combo and have a really good answer. They can't really play Path to Exile easily because their mana base is so crazy with ancient ziggurats and whatnot. So being able to play this in your human deck and have a great sideboard removal plan is 
It's really, really sweet, and it might be good enough to break into the tier list of humans in modern. Which brings it in at number five on our list. Moving in to number four on our list, we have a pretty janky combo here. This is Crafty Cut Purse with Hunted Creatures. So Crafty Cut Purse, four mana blue creature that when it enters the battlefield, if a token would enter the battlefield under your component's control, you get it instead. But it's very matchup dependent, unless you use something to make your opponent get tokens, which means the hunted creatures like Hunted Troll, Hunted Phantasm, Hunted Horror. So these cards become absolutely insane. Let's say you Ether Vial in a Crafty Cut Purse, and then you cast for two mana a Hunted Horror. You're getting a 7-7 seven, seven, along with two 3-3s. Three, That's 13 power and toughness for two mana because you get the tokens when they enter the battlefield. Hunted Troll gives you a huge unblockable creature, a 4-6 for three mana, and five one ones. It is such a cool possibility. I mean, obviously, there's problems. There's lack of consistency. Although the nice thing here is Crafty Cut Purse triggers when it enters the battlefield, which means even if your opponent lightning bolt it with your hunted creature on the stack as long as you're casting the hunted creature that turn it's gonna work they can't blow it out with removal which turns the hunted creatures just into insanely powerful game winning threats so i don't know if that's competitive but it seems super super fun and i can't wait to build like an against the odds deck around it because it seems like one of the coolest things you can be doing in modern Moving on to number three on our list, I think this is the combo I want to build around most. And it's a really simple one. I already love Sakura Tribe Elder, but when you throw Journey to Eternity into the mix, things get really insane and let you build like modern version of Nyx Fit. So here's the plan. You cast like a Thought Seizer or Inquisition on turn one, try to get the Fatal Push or Path to Exile out of your opponent's hand. On turn two, you play Sakura Tribe Elder. On turn three, you enchant the Sakura Tribe Elder with Journey to Eternity. So this gives us a situation where we sack Sakura Tribe Elder, which gets a land out of our deck so we start ramping journey to eternity goes to the graveyard right it flips around awesome that's another land and we get secure tribe elder back to the battlefield which lets us sack it again to get another land so on turn three we can triple ramp which means on turn four we're untapping with seven lands seven lands on the battlefield with just this combo which means we can win with grave titan we can win with scape shift we can play a hornet queen it doesn't really matter we can play any huge massive threat that we want to to close out the game so the ability to just triple ramp ramp on turn three with two cards that are already powerful on their own is really appealing it's risky of course a fatal push in response to journey to eternity you use it two for one kind of you still get the land with secure tribe elder but it's still very painful graveyard hate like rest in peace can shut it down but that's true of nick fit in legacy as well so if it can work in legacy hopefully it can work in modern and it seems really really fun so moving on to number two on our list, last week our Commander video featured a Polyraptor combo, but we have an even sweeter Polyraptor combo today. So we have Rite of Passage, Forerunner of the Empire, and Polyraptor. So what this does is absolutely absurd. If we can get down Rite of Passage, which is an enchantment that makes it so whenever our creatures are dealt damage, they get a plus one, plus one counter, along with a Forerunner of the Empires, and cast a Polyraptor, things go insane. So here's what happens. Polyraptor enters, Forerunner pings everything for damage, which makes another Polyraptor, but doesn't just make another Polyraptor, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on everything. So all of our creatures grow. When the Polyraptor copy enters the battlefield, everything gets pinged by the Forerunner, which grows our creatures again with Rite of Passage, which makes more Polyraptors. The end result of this is because our Forerunner of the Empires keeps growing, growing, growing every time it takes damage, it never dies, which means we can literally make not just an infinite number of polyraptors but infinitely big polyraptors so not only do we have a million polyraptors they all have over a million power and toughness it seems like we should be able to figure out a way to win the game from there so i don't know how practical this is polyraptor is really expensive but there are ways you can cheat it into play in modern which is pretty sweet you can throw the breach into play you can use dramatic entrance something like that to cheat it into play for like five mana instead of casting it for full price and then you just win the game once it happens Moving on to number one on our list, we have one more dinosaur combo, and this one's pretty spicy. So we have Zakama Primal Calamity, along with Teemer Sabretooth, and something that doubles up our mana, like Dictate of Karametra, Mana Reflection. So here's the thing. When Zakama enters a battlefield, it lets us untap all of our lands, which is already pretty sweet. But imagine if we have, we have six lands, let's say, on the battlefield, but all those lands are tapping for double mana, thanks to Mana Reflection or Dictate of Karametra. When we cast our Zakama, comma for nine mana we're actually netting mana we tap all of our lands cast a comma using nine of our mana we have three mana left 
switched over. So we actually gain three mana. Then we can use Teamer Sabretooth to pick up our Zakama for two mana, which means we still have one mana left over. Then we do it all over again. We cast Zakama, tapping all of our lands, untap all of our lands. Every time we go through that process, we are netting a mana. If we have more lands, like seven lands or eight lands, we're gaining mana even faster. The end result of this is we have infinite mana, for one thing, and we should be able to Green Sun Zenith or Blue Sun Zenith or something to win the game once we have infinite mana. Plus, we have infinite storm count, so we can technically just grape shot our opponent or empty the warrants our opponent and close out the game that way. So while it takes a little bit of work to set it up, having a free creature that untaps all of our lands in modern is kind of a big deal. That's something that we haven't really seen. This is old school, like Urza Saga style broken. And while it probably isn't going to break the format in tier one, I mean, you can storm off with brawls and stuff like that. The ability to go infinite with Zakama in modern is super, super sweet. And I'm super excited to have it be part of the format. So anyway, those are our seven Rivals of Ixalan combos for modern. Modern. Which of these do you like the most? Are you most excited for? What other sweet modern combos and synergies do you see from the set? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.